Pre-writing is the critical first step of the writing process. In this video, you'll get an overview of some of the strategies, tutoring tips, and research at play in the pre-writing videos in the Tutor Ready Writing Series. You'll find seven chapters in this video on a variety of issues regarding pre-writing, ideas for getting started, the role of strategic thinking in writing, some pre-writing strategies, how learners' writing is the basis for skills practice, points of research, tutoring tips for teaching writing, a summary of pre-writing. Reluctant writers need a lot of support and time and encouragement to write. Getting started in itself can be formidable because oftentimes people are worried about spelling and grammar and they're carrying around a fear of writing. And so emotions as well as these technical aspects of writing can be a real obstacle to getting words on the page, to getting started. And so we're going to be showing a lot of different videos that focus on pre-writing. And pre-writing is one piece of a whole writing process, but the strategies that you'll learn for pre-writing are strategies that will help you get words on the page. They get ideas flowing, they get words flowing, and it gives you something to start working with when you want to practice writing skills. This is why it's really important to learn how to teach pre-writing strategies, and you need to practice them with your learner um, during every tutoring session if you can. Pre-writing is a chance to think outside the box. It's a chance to really put away the negative judge that resides in each of us and to generate ideas. And, you know, you're also generating motivation and maybe even anticipation for writing. It's a way to get writers hooked into different topics that are meaningful to them. Um, so that you can actually produce some writing. The writing process happens and can happen before you even pick up a pencil and have a piece of paper in front of you. And in the Tutor Ready Writing videos, you're going to see lots of pre-writing strategies that are used in tutoring that involve a whole variety of activities and materials to engage all sorts of learners with different interests and different skill levels. So what you really want to do is figure out this question, and we're all thinking about this, nobody has the answer. How do you tap into um, a person's interests and energies and passions, and how do you tap into what it is that makes people really want to express themselves in writing. So that's what we're going to be exploring in these pre-writing videos. Before we find out more about pre-writing strategies, first we really need to think about, well, what is a strategy to begin with? Why are they critically important when it comes to adult literacy tutoring? So strategies are step-by-step uh, -step processes, and we can teach learners each of the steps for the strategies so that they can eventually internalize a strategy and make it their own. People who are more experienced writers have a whole bunch of writing strategies that they can sift through and decide upon what they want to use and they can use them flexibly for different purposes. And what's challenging is that these expert writers are so good at it that it's automatic. And therefore, it's actually kind of an invisible, unnoticeable process. And when we're working with adult learners, a big challenge for us is to step outside, to step back from the way we do things to realize that there are a lot of different steps involved in what we're doing and to make those steps explicit to another person. And so a strategy is an explicit step-by-step -step process that you can teach a learner, you can lay out in front of the two of you so that the learner can really practice each of the steps, know what the strategy is, 
and become better and better at the strategy as they practice it over time. So then for them, it also becomes internalized. And the hope is that it also becomes invisible for them. And then adult learners become their own best tutors in the process because they can select and have a lot of flexibility in deciding which strategy for writing suits the purpose they need it for. It's important to explicitly teach the concept of pre-writing strategies to your learner and to model the pre-writing strategies so that they can internalize them after they learn them systematically one at a time. And in practicing and using pre-writing strategies over time, your learner will begin to plan out their own writing more and more and they'll become stronger writers who can write more and more independently over time. So pre-writing strategies are a pretty powerful thing to know and to practice in adult literacy tutoring. The step-by-step -step nature of multi-step processes um, and strategies also has another effect for adult learners. It helps a learner become self-regulated in their learning, meaning that they can look at their writing and see if they've followed all the steps. And they can see if pieces have been left out and they begin, can begin to locate where they can kind of correct themselves in, in a process. So in other words, they can see if they followed the steps in the correct order. They can see if they need to go back and maybe re-examine some different steps and um, complete what's missing. And so there's a, there's a real self-efficacious aspect to teaching strategies to learners because they can really begin to trace the process and know when they're doing well and when they're missing something and can auto-correct. So they don't need a tutor over time, once again, if they have learned the strategies for writing. When we teach writing to learners, we're explicitly teaching a strategy, one at a time. And we are explicitly pointing out what is a strategy, what is this particular strategy, what are the steps involved in the strategy. And I think that sometimes for proficient writers, that might seem like it really slows you down in getting things written on the page. And you are correct, it does slow you down because once again, you need to make explicit things that are for you probably automatic. And so if you can teach a process over time, a strategy over time, your learner can know specifically the strategy they're learning and make it their own. There are lots of different pre-writing strategies that you and your learner can try out together. And you can see what works and see what doesn't work and stick with what works. So in the Tutor Ready writing videos, you'll see um, quite a few approaches. For example, you and your learner can have a conversation about an interesting idea or from something that you've read together. You can take a walk around the block and notice all the sights and the sounds and the smells and the feelings and just notice all the senses that are at play and then come back to some, pe some paper and a pen and start writing about it. You can listen to an evocative piece of music and generate words and feelings that the piece of music raises. And an image can be a great springboard into writing. What I love about it is there's no wrong answer when you talk about the picture, when you ask questions about it and name the things that you see in it or the activities that might have come right before it or right after it, or when you talk about the feelings or the mood that the picture evokes. Um, so that's just a wonderful way to generate a lot of language ideas and start getting them flowing in your brain so that you can then start putting them down on paper.
A story or a poem or another text can also be a natural lead into writing. And in tutoring, it's a very common way to get to writing, is by reading something interesting, having a discussion about it, talking about what questions it raised for you, or what activities you'd like to do as a result of the reading, and really reinforcing that link between reading and writing um, so that what you write becomes an extension of what you read, and vice versa. Story starters are something that you'll find out about in the videos. And what they do is they help you think of ways to organize a lot of free-flowing ideas that is just natural for the way humans think. We don't think linearly or in order, and so sometimes we need an organizing structure into which we can place our ideas so that we can then start actually writing something that makes sense, not to only to yourself, but to other people. Um, the other great thing about graphic organizers is this. As a tutor, you're going to try to think of ways that you can avoid presenting a blank sheet of paper for your learner to see and to start writing on. It really can be difficult to get started, and graphic organizers supply just another support for a writer to think in terms of and to get language on the page so that they're not facing actually nothing on a page that they are responsible for somehow filling up. Pre-writing strategies can be as simple as underlining text and listing ideas that come to mind, or it can be more complex. For example, using the reporter's questions of who, what, when, where, why, how, which. Um, it can also be a way to think about all the ideas that you have about a large topic and figure out how to narrow down that topic to something manageable, to some, I'd say, bite-sized pieces that you can actually use. There are also strategies. One is called free writing, for example, that really encourages a writer to just put every and any idea in their mind onto the page. And the important thing about pre-writing in general and free writing specifically is it teaches a writer to not let spelling and grammar and other mechanical writing issues get in the way of writing. It's really important to teach learners and to teach yourself, if you don't already know this, that spelling and writing are two different activities to be focused on in two different parts of the lesson. The same goes for grammar and writing. You can practice grammar in a different part of a lesson, but it cannot be confused with actually writing because we don't want grammar and spelling to impede actual writing, which is getting thoughts on the page. So those mechanical pieces of writing are things that, yes, you, you and your learner will practice, but not while you're busy writing, while you're busy generating ideas and getting them on paper. Strategies like free writing, for example, try to help us ease the tension and try to help us cut down on, I think, some free-flowing, floating anxiety about writing that all of us as writers, I tend to think, have. It's not easy to write. And that's kind of, as a tutor, you want to think in terms of how can I support this writing experience? How can I decrease um, nervousness and tension? And how can I make writing flow as easily as possible for this person? One way that you can do that is through the strategies that you'll see in this video series on Tutor Ready Writing. And a, a small suggestion can be this. Can you work on half a sheet of paper instead of a full sheet of paper? Can you use index cards and post-it notes creatively so that the amount of text that you write 
seems appropriate for the amount of space that you have to write in. So just think creatively as you can. Cut down on the, on the space that needs to be filled. Set it up with graphic organizers so that you're not facing that blank page. And just in general, think about how relaxing and enjoyable an experience you can turn writing into for your learner. The real bonus of getting text on the page when you've done pre-writing is this. Now you have words on the page, you can play with the language on the page, and you can practice lessons and lessons worth of skills um, like fluency, like reading comprehension, alphabetics, vocabulary, um, grammar, spelling. Once you get text on the page, you can practice all of these skills very nicely in different parts of the lesson. Teaching learners strategies, um, or what it means to think strategically while they're writing, um, is the underpinning of Tutor Ready uh, writing videos. And in learning pre-writing strategies, um, some points of research to know are that experienced writers spend a lot of time pre-writing. Um, they think a lot and plan and organize before they put a first draft on paper. So oftentimes expert writing is expert pre-writing. Experienced writers know how to plan, how to organize, and how to revise what they write. And the amount of time that a writer does spend pre-writing often really pays off when it comes to actual drafting and revising and actually getting a writing product um, completed. Newer tutors especially might feel a little, um, a little bit intimidated about teaching writing, which is fine because writing is it's hard work. And that's why we want to give you strategies you can use and, and turn around and feel success in your tutoring, not to mention have your learner experience success. So feeling a bit nervous or overwhelmed is really a feeling that adult learners have, and it's a feeling that volunteer tutors have very much as well. So sometimes getting started really is the hardest part. And so I just wanted to give you a few pointers you can put in, put in your back pocket um, to know about what writing can look like in a tutoring session. So in one-on-one -on -one tutoring, little things matter. So for example, when you're writing or just tutoring in general, it's really good to sit side by side. Not only because um, philosophically it shows that your peers facing the future together and have an aspirational goal in your future, but it also is quite practical because you want to be able to read the same texts that your learner is reading and you have it in between the two of you so you can share the same text. And when it comes to writing, you want to be able to share what the two of you have written in your sessions and have the page in between you. And the reason is it makes it easier when you ask your learner to share their writing or when you share your writing with your learner, um, you look at the writing on the page, your learner can read their writing to you, and you do not have to muddle through handwriting issues. And it's also a way that your learner, they can kind of auto-correct or self-edit when they get the first read. So having the sheet of paper or the, the work that you're doing upside up or right side up in between you um, is pretty important practically. It's a good practice in tutoring for you as a tutor to write at the same time that your learner is writing. It takes a long time to write. And so you don't wanna be the person who's sitting right beside someone who's working very hard on their writing and you're doing what? Tapping your fingers, looking at your watch, staring at your learner, basically 
making an awkward situation happen. And so a good thing to do is to write yourself. Um, and that not only models to your learner what another writer does when they write, but it also gives them some text that you can share with them to see what kind of product a good writer can turn out. Having said that, it's not a time for you to write as fast as you can and as impressively and floridly as you can so that in comparison it makes a person feel bad, but it is a chance to <laughs> be on the same page as your learner in terms of the activity that you're doing um, and to be um, that expert model that they can really learn from in explicit ways, in subtle ways, in big ways and in small ways. Another pointer just about how writing might look like in your sessions. Um, for the most part, you and your learner are going to be printing. You're going to be using uppercase and lowercase letters appropriately in the writing that you do. And this is in contrast to using cursive writing together. And unless your learner has requested that that person really wants to learn cursive, you use printing. And here's why. When we look around in the world, that's the way that we see print. So when you're riding the bus and you're seeing advertisements, it's in print, uppercase, lowercase. When you pick up a newspaper, it's in print, uppercase, lowercase. Same thing about memos that you read at work or notes that come home for your child's school. So in small ways like this, um, we want what happens in our tutoring to be relevant and useful in what happens outside of tutoring. And so we want to link your learner's life in any way that we can for what's relevant, useful, appropriate, helpful, what they want to learn about and be able to do. What happens in tutoring, we want that linked to the reality of your adult learner's life. In addition to using print, uppercase, lowercase, you really have to watch yourself. And I'm speaking from my own experience because my handwriting can charitably be called um, illegible. And so when I'm working with an adult learner, I really have to make sure that I'm forming letters that are legible, that a person can easily read. We don't want to be adding layers of difficulty onto any tutoring activity um, just because we're not really writing neatly enough. So just do your best and take a look at your work and see if you're if your writing is legible. It's something for you to work on too. Tutors often ask if it's okay to use a computer um, in writing or if it's better to use a pencil and paper or pen and paper. And so the answer is yes and yes. It is okay to use a computer to do writing in your lessons. And when you think about it, when you talk about adult literacy, Technology and computer use is an integral piece of the definition of what it means to be literate in our technologically saturated uh, society. So knowing keyboarding and having experience using the keyboard and using a computer or a tablet or a phone, not only are they goals that learners bring to the program, um, they really serve the learner in a lot of ways outside of your tutoring, um, in the office, at home, out in the community, um, where technology is everywhere. So go ahead and use um, a phone or a tablet or a computer to do writing with your learner. It's important. It's a good piece of knowledge uh, for a learner to have. At the same time, Using pencil and paper, pen and paper, whatever your learner prefers, is really great to do in tutoring. There's so much that happens when you're forming letters with the muscles in your hand that are communicating with your brain. And in really noticing how you form letters, in noticing patterns as they fall onto the page while you're writing words and spaces and sentences and adding punctuation. So there's a real kinesthetic strength that um, writing by hand 
presents and, and taps into when you're actually writing in a lesson. Something else that happens when you use a pencil and paper or pen and paper is you're developing muscles in your hands and handwriting becomes neater and neater over time. And not only are you kind of feeling the way that words and letters are, are shaped and what sentences do, you're noticing a lot more in how language is constructed. You're also doing something pretty great, which is you are setting down a trail of progress. So when you have handwritten writing samples that you've produced over time, it's, it's very important and motivational to be able to point to things that have gotten better and to be able to point to things on the page that you can do now that you couldn't do before. And so somehow when you're using a piece of paper instead of a keyboard, um, progress becomes that much more tangible over time. So all of these tips and ideas that we've talked about as far as pre-writing strategies, what strategies are, what writing might look like in a lesson, these are um, things that you will be able to see in the Tutor Ready writing um, videos. And so I encourage you to pick and choose and see what's most useful for you right off the bat. And hopefully by watching the videos, you'll be able to learn more and more about being a tutor and you will become an expert writing tutor yourself in addition to helping your learner become an expert writer. So um, please tune in, watch the videos, and I hope you enjoy them. You've just seen an overview of the ideas and strategies you'll find in the pre-writing videos in the Tutor Ready Writing video series. Please enjoy the videos.